Good day, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, my name is Zama and this is my channel, Unsolicited Advice to South Africa. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are talking about hair. It's that hair topic again. I want to give you tips on mistakes that I made that I don't want you to make while you're growing out your hairline. Today I want to talk about five common mistakes to avoid when growing out your hairline. So what are the five worst things that you can do while you're still growing out your hairline? So number one on my list are knots. And we all get those knots, right, at the end of our hairline. And you don't know whether to tug at them or to take a scissors. What's the right thing to do? What's the appropriate or the correct thing to do? The answer is here, whenever actually you have a question about your hairline, always ask yourself, how much tension am I putting in? And weigh up the pros and cons. In terms of the knots in your hair, you want to use a scissors. And you want to cut just the end off, so as close to the knot as possible. Why? Because if you're pulling the knot, you also run the risk of pulling the roots of your hair, or just pulling your hair in general and weakening the, the rest of your hair. Why you want to remove knots in the first place, I mean, unless you're locked, you'd want to remove knots in your hair because the, there's a greater chance of the smaller hairs surrounding it also getting locked or also getting in a, in a knot and that's going to make it more and more difficult for you to perform your massages. And number two is related to number one actually, it's massages, how to do your massages correctly. Now when we're massaging we don't want to rub because that's, when it, that's what's going to cause excessive knots in the first place. Yes, it's inevitable that you will get knots when you're doing your massages but when you're rubbing you're going to get an excessive amount of knots. So what you actually want to do is that you want to use your fingers and then you want to press, right, press and then massage, massage. So it's a nice uh, deep massage but you're not rubbing in any way, you've just got your fingertips and you're pressing down and that's what's going to allow the blood flow. We're trying to increase blood flow here, we, we're not trying to perform I don't know, some magic on the actual hair. We are trying to increase blood flow so that it can stimulate new hair growth. So we don't rub, we don't rub the hairline. This is not massaging, no. We press and then we go in circular motions, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, you can just switch between those. You can even go sideways like this, but as long as you are massaging and not rubbing, because rubbing is going to cause, number one, excessive knots, and number two, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. You want to increase blood flow, and rubbing, is, it's not going to do that, at least not as effectively as if you're doing, or when you're doing the exercise or the massage correctly. Number three is braiding. You know what, you want to avoid braiding, like avoid braiding your hair. Completely. I know it sounds weird. It's like the weirdest thing to say, like how can braiding be the worst? Braiding is one of the worst things that you can do when you're growing out your hairline. Here are two reasons, or this is what I think about it, right? And I've done these, remember? I've, I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it, and it didn't work out for me. So braiding your hair, number one, if you're braiding the actual hair, because you might think, okay, I'm trying to grow my hairline, so let me braid the tiny hairs that are on my hairline, that way I'm not going to attach them, right? And that will give them a chance to grow. Yeah, theoretically it sounds correct, but here's where your challenge is. Is that number one, you've added an extra hair piece, no matter how small, you've added an extra hair piece, so that's extra weight. It's weight on your hair, right? That's That you don't need. On a weak hairline, you don't need that extra weight. Number two is that braids cause buildup. No matter how short you keep them for, they cause buildup. So when you're undoing your hair, you're going to lose unnecessary hair. So it's counterproductive. You spent three months trying to grow your hairline, you haven't touched it, you've braided it fine. But now when it comes to removing the braids, first of all, you're going to notice that some hairs have been pulled up from the roots because of the weight of the braid. And then number two, you're also going to notice that your hair is just breaking where there is buildup. 
So braiding your hair, especially the hairline itself, is a no-no. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I, I'm not braiding the hairline. I'm just going to leave this part out and then I'm going to braid the back. What about that? Well, what you doing there is that you moving or you extending your traction alopecia to other parts of your head so now you're leaving the part that you're trying to regrow and the part that's healing and you're just creating problems elsewhere so by starting your hairline further back by starting it further back you're actually just causing a problem elsewhere on your scalp so you just want to avoid plaiting your hair honestly if you can <laughs> avoid plaiting your hair completely until you are satisfied with the, with the results that you have of your hair growth. And number four, this is the worst. I think they're all bad, but like this is just top, top notch, the worst thing. And I can't believe I ever did this. But I did this when I first noticed my attraction at the feature. And I did this in hopes that it would help my hair to blend in, or help my hairline to blend in with my, um, with the rest of my hair, right? And that is that I used a chemical on my hair. I used a chemical relaxer on my hair, and I was hoping that the hair to front would look more like baby hairs, and then it would just smooth out, because I've always had like baby hairs anyway. So I was just kind of hoping that people wouldn't notice because I've always had the baby hair and that it would just smooth out and kind of blend in with the rest of my hair, which was natural, right? Big mistake. It made no sense, number one. Number two, it just made it even more difficult for my hair to grow back. Number three, chemical damage. Because no matter how much you may use things like neutralizing shampoos, for example, the chemicals that are in your hair from relaxers, they penetrate deep into the scalp. I mean, you're sitting with the relaxer for how long? I don't know how long it is these days. Those days are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You're sitting with those relaxers in your hair and they're sinking deep into the scalp. They're sinking deep into the scalp and a neutralizing shampoo or even a couple of washes is not going to fix that problem. You are going to basically be dealing with those side effects for a very long time. So don't relax your hair when you are struggling to grow it back. And then the very final thing that I can think of is just products. Don't overdo the products. Don't use weighty, heavy products that are just tugging at your hair or that are blocking your pores. You know, don't use products that are going to block your pores, that are not going to allow your hair to, or your scalp to breathe. And this includes things like gels. Like a gel will literally sit in your hair and it looks pretty. But then you have to wash it out and you have to use a little bit of force when you're washing it out. You know, you have to use a little bit of effort when you're washing it out. And all that effort is causing strain on your hair, right? And just having all their products stuck on your hair, that's also weight in your hair. And then you're trying to remove it, that's stress in your hair. So those are the things to avoid or the mistakes I've made. And I'm hoping that you don't have to make the same mistakes, right?